Hey guys, today we're going through another leak code question in a mock interview style. So the question we're going through today is leak code 53 maximum subarray. So the question reads, find the contiguous subarray within an array containing at least one number which has the largest sum. For example, given the array, the contiguous subarray is 4, negative 1, 2, 1, which has the largest sum of 6. So the first step is to always ask some clarifying questions from your interviewer. For example, can the input be an empty array? What are the max and min values that can go into the array? Will there be duplicates in the array? Etc. Since this is a leak code question, this will not be very helpful, but in an actual interview, it's essential to ask these questions to really draw out what the interviewer is trying to ask you. Now, many of these problems are actually brain teasers that you'd easily be able to solve by hand if you forget about the code. So that's where I always start. So my first thought when looking at this question was, if we're looking for the largest subarray, let's just look at all possible subarrays to find the best value. So for example, we could do negative two, negative two plus one, negative two plus one plus negative three, and so on and so forth. And then we'd move on to the next number. So we could look at one. 1 plus negative 3, etc. Okay, so now we've fleshed out our solution in our heads. Let's get coding. Okay, so I've set up a main function here with our array from the leak code question, and we're just going to print out the value that gets returned from calling our function. So the first thing we need to do is we need to check if the array is empty. So we're just going to add that in right here. So we're going to say, if nums.length is equal to zero, then we're going to return zero. Now, next, we need to keep track of two things. So the first thing is going to be our best seen value. So we're just going to add that in, and we're going to set it to the first value in our nums array. The second thing we're going to need to keep track of is our running total. We'll just add that in here. And next, we're kind of doing a bit of a brute force solution here, so we want to iterate through all our numbers. So we're going to say for int i equals zero, i is less than nums.length, i plus plus. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set our running total equal to the number we're currently looking at. So we're going to say running total equal nums i. Now, if that running total is better than our best seen, then we need to set our best seen value to that running total. So, if the running total is greater than the best seen value, we're going to say the best seen value equals this running total. Okay, perfect. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to iterate through the rest of the numbers. So each time we look at a new number, we're going to add it to our running total. And if this value is better than our best seen total, like before, we make it our best seen value. So we're going to say for int j equals i plus 1, because we don't want to repeat i. We've already looked at that. We just want to go through the rest of the numbers. So if we're currently examining negative 2, for example, we want to iterate now through 1, negative 3, 4, etc. So for j equals i plus 1, j is also less than nums.length, j plus plus. What we're going to do is, like I said before, we're just going to add this number to the running total. So running total plus equal nums j. Okay. Perfect. And now we're going to compare this running total to our best seen value. So if running total is greater than the best seen value, then we're going to say the best seen value equals this running total. Okay, perfect. And now, once we've gone through all of these numbers, we're just going to simply return our best seen value. Okay, so let's try running this and you see we get six, which is the correct answer. So this works. This is definitely a solution, and it's great to be able to 
show your interviewer that you can put any code to the whiteboard. However, unfortunately, this isn't an efficient solution. It's ON squared because of the two for loops. However, while doing these brute force solutions, you can usually get some ideas about why it's inefficient. For me, while doing this, I kind of came to this realization that each time we look at a number, we're really just seeing if what we've done previously can benefit us or not. So let's go back to the drawing board here. Okay, so let's just delete what we had from before. So if the running total we have so far is less than our current number, there's really no point in starting earlier than our current number. We're just making our sum worse. We only want to add numbers when it's improving the sum. So let me give you an example here. Let's take the example of negative two, one, two. Okay, so we look at the negative two. We have nothing previously, so we're just gonna put in negative two. Now, when we're looking at one, our current running total is negative two. And if we add one to, if we, if we add one to that, that's a worse number than just sticking with our one. So we should just stick with our one and forget about what came previously. Now we're on two. If we look at the previous running total, it's a positive number. It's going to help improve our sum. So we add two to the one to get three. Okay, great. However, we don't wanna get into the trap of thinking only positive numbers make our solution better. So let's take this example. Negative two, three, negative one, four. Okay, so again, we start with our first number, negative two. We don't have anything previously, that becomes a running total. Now we look at three. Negative two, adding that to three is just gonna make it worse, so we're better to start with three. Now we look at negative one. The sum to the left is a positive number. It's going to help improve our total sum right now. So we should add three to the negative one to get two. And now we look at four. Two, the sum we have so far, is going to help improve our total sum. So we should add four plus two to get six. So you can see that by including a negative number, we were actually able to get a better total sum by doing three minus one plus four. Okay, so we have the seed of an idea for our solution now. If the previous sum is greater than zero, it's helping us. We should add it to our current number. But if the previous sum is less than zero, forget it. It's going to make our sum worse and we're better off just starting at the number we're currently at. So let's code this up. Okay, so let's just get rid of what we had from before. And let's start by coding this again. So the first thing we're going to do is the same thing we did in our brute force solution. And that is we're going to check if this array actually even has any numbers in it. So if the length of this array is zero, we're just going to return zero. Okay, perfect. Now, we need to keep track of two things. We need to keep track of the sum we've seen previously and our best seen value. So let's just add in our previous value and we're just going to set that to nums zero. And we also want to add in our best seen value and we're going to also set that to nums zero. So we've already started with num zero. So for our array, we can start at position one. So we're going to go for int i equals one, i is less than nums dot length, i plus plus. We can iterate through all those numbers. So what we wanna do is we want to look at whether the previous value is greater than zero. So this is like what we talked about before. Is this previous value going to help us or hurt us? So we're going to say the previous value. If the previous value is greater than zero, then this is a good number that's going to improve our sum. So we want to set the previous value to nums i plus the previous value. If the previous value is less than or equal to zero, it's not helping us. So we might as well just keep nums i and start with that number. If you're not familiar with this notation in Java, this just means if previous is greater than zero, do this, else do this. It's just nice and handy to make your code a little cleaner. Okay, so 
So far, we've set our previous value equal to our current number plus the previous value if this previous value is helping us. If it's not, we're just going to set the previous value equal to our current number. Okay, now we need to see if this is better than our best seen value. So our best seen value is going to equal the maximum value of the best seen value so far or the previous value. So we're just going to say which is the better number here, the best seen value or the previous value, make that our new best seen value. And at the end of all this, we're just going to return our best seen value. And that's it. So all we've done here is we've started by taking a look at the array. We're going to see if there's nothing in it and return zero. We're going to set our previous value equal to the first number in our array, negative two, and our best seen value equal to negative two. And then we're going to go through the rest of the numbers. And we're going to say at each point, we're going to look is the previous sum helping us? And if it's helping us, then we're going to add it and make that our new sum. And if it's better than our best seen value, we're going to make that our new best seen value. If it's hurting us, we might as well just start at this number. So our previous is just going to become that number that we're currently on. And then at the end of all that, we return our best seen value. And the great thing about the solution is it's on. We are only going through the numbers once. So this is much better than our brute force solution. So now let's talk about some test cases we may want to run through. These will be based on how your interviewer answered some of your clarifying questions at the beginning, but here are some ideas. What if the array is empty? What if there are many duplicates of the same value, etc.? For these, just walk through your code with an example and make sure your code still works. If your code failed any of your test cases, think how you can revise your solution to address it. And that's it. I'll put up the solution on GitHub for anyone to download and review, and please leave a comment if you see any errors, think you have a better solution, or if you solve this in a different language and think it might be helpful for the community. And be sure to subscribe if you want to see when I put out new videos so you can solve these problems right along with me. Good luck with your interview practice!